Hello friends, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to talk about the question paper. This is the botany question paper that was asked for the assistant professor recruitment in Karnataka state. KPSC conducts this examination, KPSC or KEA. Karnataka Examination Authority conducts this examination for the recruitment of associate professors, assistant professors in the government first grade colleges. So it was conducted in March uh, 14, 2022. This is the question paper. We are going to analyze this, discuss the answers. So here and there, some answers, even there are ambiguity, the official answers are not yet, uh, uh, they have not yet um, announced. So based on our knowledge and based on whatever I have uh, researched, based on that, I'm going to share the answers. You can feel free to comment your answers or explanations. If any one of two answers are wrong, you can feel free to share it in the comments. I hope this paper will be useful for you who have has written this exam today. And also it will be useful for the uh, whoever watches this video after many days or many months, whoever are preparing for any type of government exams in Karnataka or outside Karnataka. This will be as a model question paper so they can know what type of questions they can expect from the government examinations. So, so for that, this it will be like a model paper for that reason. I'm going to do this now. Okay, we'll start. So this, if you see this, they have a totally 200, 220 minutes time was given. So almost three hours examination was given. The question paper will be given before itself, uh, 10 or 15 minutes to fill the OMR and all. And this has about 250 marks. Each question carries two marks. Each question carries two marks and there is a negative marking of 0.5. So if you answer one question wrong, it gives you a minus 0.5 marks. So this is the question paper pattern. We'll not go much into all those things. Okay, we'll start with the questions. Assemblage protection is at uh, this one. We have different categories. This uh, is A4 version. The booklet what I received is A4 version. So the questions will be based on that. Okay, the... Assemblage protection is a type of dash conservation. So this, I didn't get the answer for this. Biodiversity. So if you see this biodiversity, what will happen? It will increase towards the equator and it will decrease towards the Arctic region because the Arctic region has a very uh, less climate. It's high winter over there. It's very cold climate is there. So as you go towards the polar, polar region or the Arctic region, the biodiversity decreases. But when you come towards the equator, the biodiversity or the variations or the number of animals and plants and trees will increase because towards the equator, you have a temperate region. They do not have very high temperature or very low temperature. Normal temperature you have where all the animals and plants can sustain. So according to this, option A is the right answer. Option A is the right answer. So uh, that is decreases towards the Arctic region and increases towards the equator. Who among the following proposed the germplasm theory? It was August Wiesman who proposed the germplasm theory, direct question. And which one of the following is the main cause of evolution? So this is where even I had done mistakes. See, all the four reasons are the causes for the evolution. Mutations, recombination, natural selection, genetic drift, all four will contribute for the evolution. Also according to Charles Darwin and other scientists and all. But they have asked the main cause of evolution so the main cause is the natural selection. It is a nature which selects the uh, species and gives for the evolution, contributes for the evolution. So though all four options are correct, if they're given one more option, all of the above, then that would have been a very good option, all of the above. Since they're not given that, so the best out of all the four you have to select, that is natural selection. Natural selection is the main cause of evolution. So match the following. So according to this, it is very simple. If you know any one among these four also, you can easily answer. So all of you would have been knowing at least symbiosis. Symbiosis is an association between two organisms in uh, two organisms in which uh, two interdependent organisms and they do not harm each other. Both of them get benefited in symbiosis. So according to this, option three is the right answer. If you know one of it also, you could click the B option is the right answer. Symbiosis, it's association between two organisms which both the organisms are benefited. There's no harm. While on the other hand, if you see predation, See, the lion goes and hunts a tiger. That is, uh, sorry, a lion goes and hunts a deer. That is a predation. So what happens in predation? The lion is getting benefited. The other animal is getting harmed. So predation is the interaction of two species in which one is killed and the other is eaten by the other and eaten by the another. So I gave you an example. So if you know this, the rest two becomes very easy. So using this, you can find out parasitism. In parasitism, what happens? And it is an association between two organisms in which one acquires food and shelter at the expense of others. 
so that is parasitism if you take lice or if you take so many flukes that are there intestinal worms they enter inside our body and they take shelter from our body we are called as the host and that organism is called as parasite so it takes shelter in our body and wh what happens it uh, takes food and all from our body so that is about parasitism the rest one is um, uh, amensalism it is the association between two population in which one inhibits the other while remaining unaffected itself that is called as amensalism okay so with this is the option b is the right answer over here the entire series of communities of biotic succession from pioneer to climax community is known as seer so if you see ecological seer zero seer hydro seer all those things would have studied so how one community gets succeeded by the other community for example if you see zero seer it will start from the nude land or the nude barren mountain lichens will establish then mosses will come small herbs and shrubs will come then larger plants and trees will come then tall climatic condition uh, climax community trees will come so that is called a seer where you can find a series of communities in which one community is succeeding to another community starting from the pioneer to the climax community from lichens to trees so that is about your zero uh, seer so c s c r e if you remember this you could have easily answered this question which among the following is not a pollutant so carbon dioxide is not a pollutant hydrocarbon sulfur dioxide carbon monoxide all three are pollutants by burning of fossil fuels and all you will get this pollutant carbon dioxide is not a pollutant because we exhale carbon dioxide every day all the plants give out carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide cannot be a pollutant or else we cannot survive in this land if carbon dioxide was a pollutant so that simple logic you if you had applied you could have easily answered this question also carbon dioxide is not a pollutant causes for polyploidy so what is polyploidy for example in, uh, when the mitosis or meiosis is occurring poly means many ploidy means chromosome set usually there will be an haploid or there will be an diploid sets of chromosome but in certain plants especially this happens in the plants the set of number of sets will be continuously increasing it will become 3n or 4n or 5n you will find even hexaploid also 5 and 6 and hexaploid is seen in wheat and all so these are all polyploidy more than one set or more than two sets of chromosomes will be there so what are the reason for this abnormal mitosis is one reason so that daughter cells will not be formed properly cell wall will not be formed temperature chemicals so all of this is an answer so all of this will cause polyploidy which molecular structure is not a component of dna so if you take a dna it has three major components so in all my videos i have thought about molecular videos i have made so in that video if you have seen that video you would have easily answered this question so your dna is made up of nitrogenous base deoxyribose sugar and phosphate group amino acid does not uh, is not present so that is the answer it's not a component of dna match the following with their identification and same thing if you know one of this the other all would have become easy that's why even i answered this question so i have new geographical isolation so geographical isolation geography means river land and mountains right same thing failure of interbreeding between groups of individuals due to physical barriers such as sea river and mountain is called as geographical isolation so one will become two so see you can see there's only one option where one is having two so this is the right answer option b is the right answer so based on this you can eliminate the other options and choose the uh, correct option this is also one of the trick to answer multiple choice question so uh, the other of the things you can see here and you can read the questions so you can pause if you want to read questions or if you want to read slowly or write down pause the video and you can write it down match the list 1 and 2 so here also i knew one or two very well i knew archaeopteryx is the connecting link between reptiles and uh, aves archaeopteryx is the connecting link so that i knew archaeopteryx and hms beagle our charles darwin who went for a uh, voyage he used this uh, ship called as hms beagle and he went to galapagos island and there he discovered this adaptive radiation and all one more question comes related to that so it was charles darwin using this he had uh, using this ship he had traveled the entire place to study about the natural selection process and all so using this two option this two if you know one or two anything very well this uh, such type of match the following questions becomes very easy so uh, based on that only this question is option c is the right answer so option c is the right answer over here see darwin's finches are example for adaptive radiation so darwin's finches where the finch is a type of a bird its beak was modified according to its feeding habits 
So usually it had a single ancestor. There was one ancestor in South Africa, I think, if I'm not wrong. From there, it had diverse the, the species went to different different parts of the land. So it went to one land, it went to another land, another another land. So based on the food that is there, let me consider A, B, C, D, and E. There it went to five lands: A, B, C, D, E lands. And based on the food that it had. So it changed its beak over a period of time. And later that became an evolution. So whatever the next progeny or next offsprings came, all the birds or all the finches had the beak, uh, beak modified to take the food from that particular land. So according to the feeding habits, it changed. This is called as adaptive radiation. From single point, it is going everywhere. That is called as adaptive radiation. Okay. Hmm. Consider the following statements. Instant speciation is possible due to, if I want to produce a new species very quickly, definitely I have to do mutation so that new species will come up or even uh, uh, hybridization also I can do. I can take one species of plant and other species of plant and interspecific hybridization or intergeneric hybridization. So whatever there are different types of hybridization. If I do that also I can get a new species or by recombination by meiosis, by genetic recombination also it is possible for me to get a new species. So if one, two and three, option one, two and three, all three are right. Four is reciprocal translocation, not contribute to its instant speciation and all. Only small characters will be changed, but that will not lead to speciation. So according to this, it is option B, which is the right answer. One, two and three, it, which leads to instant speciation. The common gene delivery system for in vivo gene therapy. So if I want to take anything, it is the adenoviral vectors, which are very commonly used. Though you use electroporation, lipofaction, microinjection, all those things are used, but adenoviral vectors are very popularly used for gene therapy, gene delivery system to deliver a foreign gene into a host organism. So application of gene therapy in clinical trials did not succeed. So what was the reason is because there was no proper incorporation of the gene into the host cell. So they might have been because of there's no host gene. Uh, because what happens whenever you insert a foreign gene, there are high chances that your body will reject it. So because of the rejection, the gene therapy was not successful in the clinical trials. That was the main reason. Augmentation gene therapy, uh, using this augmentation gene therapy, you can rectify certain genetic disorders. So that genetic disorders may be somatic or it may be vegetative or it may be sex linked also. So it is an example for both germline as well as somatic gene therapy. It is the both. Match the following column one and column two. And this was very difficult question. How did I answer this? I want to say you, I just knew one or two. See, if I, I knew the what is evanescent, fluorescent, luminescent, all those things are something to do with light. Fluorescence, uh, luminescence, bioluminescence, something to do with light. So I had that as one clue and I marked that as light beam. And I knew calorimetry. Calorie means heat, energy. Uh, that is uh, nothing but exothermic reaction. So energy or heat is an exothermic reaction. Just I had only this two concept in my mind. Based on this, I had marked the uh, option. Luckily, it was the right option. So option A is the right answer for this column, this answer, biosensors. So what is biosensor? Biosensor is nothing but it, it is used to analyze the analyte. So for example, you're giving some protein or giving some vitamins. This It's a sensor. What is a sensor? Sensor is something which senses. For example, this nib will sense the touch and I can write it on the notepad or iPad or anything. Same way the phone, the uh, finger, the little pressure will be touched on the phone and you can uh, operate the Android phone. Similarly, biosensors are those compounds which will be used to analyze the bio components, biological components, proteins, amino acids, vitamins, DNA, RNA, they are called as biosensors. So full genome sequencing, or it is also called as whole genome sequencing. See, genome may be present in the uh, nucleus, it may be present in the chloroplast, if it's a plant, if, uh, if it is an uh, animal, it will be present in the mitochondria. So the whole genome sequencing means you have to sequence the entire DNA that is present in all these things. The chromosomal DNA is called as chromosomal nucleic acid. These two are called as extra chromosomal DNA that is present outside the nucleus. They are called as extra chromosomal DNA. Only if I sequence all these three that becomes full genome sequencing or whole genome sequencing. There are many methods to sequence it. Sanger method is one of the famous method. Okay. 
Procedure between formation of plantlets in culture and establishment of seedlings in the field is called as hardening. So I have given some five to six uh, tissue culture related videos in my channel. If you have just watched that out of curiosity also, this question would have been easily answered because we harden the plants, acclimatize the plant. That is called as hardening. It was very simple. Which one of the following virus is used as biocontrol agent? So what, how did I apply this biocontrol agent? To be frank, I didn't know the answer for this. So tobacco mosaic virus, it causes diseases. You cannot use that as a biocontrol agent. Similarly, cucumber mosaic virus also, it will cause certain diseases, mosaic disease in cucurbitaceae members. So you can't apply that as biocontrol agent. They're all the pathogens. So keeping that in mind, I uh, rejected these two options. And the third option, all of this cannot be an option. Keeping that, I eliminated the three options and I chose the D option. Luckily, that was the right answer. So nuclear polyhedral virus is used as biocontrol agent. What is biocontrol agent? It inhibits the growth of other organisms, so biocontrol agent. Trichoderma is a very good example. So I was expecting trichoderma, but here uh, this was outside the, the book. We study only trichoderma and all in our uh, syllabus we have. So this was something outside that we have to study. The resolution power of a microscope means, see, resolving or resolution means how distinguishedly you can identify two different objects or two different points on an object. For example, in a microscope, a simple microscope, compound microscope, electron microscope, what the resolution power is increasing. What do you mean by that? I can locate two different points very beautifully. So though it magnifies the actual meaning of resolution power is the distinguishing between two lines or points in an object. Optical fiber. So optical fiber is what nowadays we get this uh, uh, optical fiber internet very fast it is coming. Optical means something to do with light. So it is based on the principle of total internal reflectance, TIR it is also called as. PCR, this is very simple, basic knowledge. It is of 12th standard level, even 10th and 12th standard kids can uh, answer this question. PCR, polymerase chain reaction, it amplifies the DNA content. So it increases the DNA content. That is the importance of PCR. RFLP, restriction fragment length polymorphism. So what do we do is, for example, in a, in a single species, for example, I am working on a plant called as Bacopa moneri. If I want to see what are the variations among the different species in the same species, then I do this RFLP. It is called as molecular markers. So these molecular markers, what do they do? They give the relationship between two or three variations, two or three individuals of the same species. For example, one bacopa plant from Himalayas, I will collect bacopa moneri, one bacopa from Indonesia, one bacopa moneri from, I will collect from uh, some other continents of China or Asia. Now, I want all our bacopa moneri, all are belong to the same species, but there are variations among them. If I do RFLP, I can come to know what are the variations. So that can be done between two individuals of same species. That is very important. So that is the only thing. See, individuals of two species, they, we cannot use two species. Definitely, they'll be different. So you should use the same species. This is also wrong. So that is how elim I eliminated the answers and I an answered this. Western blot. Southern blot is used for DNA. RNA is for northern blotting. Western blotting is polyacrylamide. Yes, this page we use. So it's very common question. It's just a direct question. Polyacrylamide gel is used. It's agarose gel is not used over here. It's only polyacrylamide gel is commonly used over here. That is about Western blotting. Most genetically modified plants are generated by agrobacterium tumefaciens. Agrobacterium is one of the soil-borne pathogen which causes tumor. It has this the genes and all that can cause uh, tumor. So we silence those genes and we use this bacteria, agrobacterium tumefaciens, to develop GMO, genetically modified plants, Bt cotton, and all was developed using this plant only. Okay, genetic testing on GMOs in food and feed is usually done by PCR. So quantitative PCR. So it is used to do this testing. It is done. This, so I didn't get the answer. So if you know the answer, if anybody knows the answer, you can feel free to comment in the comment section, type in the comment section. Models used in the analysis of variance. ANOVA is called as analysis of variance. You used fixed models. You can use mixed models. You used random effect models. So all the models, this is the answer. All of the models are used to analyze the variance. That is the models used. This is also another very simple question, direct question. So certain blotting technique. So if you know what is certain blotting in BSc level or MSc level, you would have studied just based on that, you can study. So the first thing is if you get a DNA, you're going to use restriction enzymes and you're going to cleave that. So first one is your cleavage. Next, you're going to run the electrophoresis to separate them based, you'll get a bands based on the molecular weight. 
So that is your electrophoresis. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to transfer this from sodium blotting from the gel to the nitrocellulose sheets. You're going to transfer. That is called as blotting. That is your third one. Fourth one is hybridization. You're going to use radioactive labeled probes. You're going to use and uh, you're going to blow. Uh, that is called as your uh, hybridization where a probe comes and sticks to the gel or in the gel on, uh, I mean, bands. That is called as hybridization. And the last one, since it is radioactivity, you will expose them to autoradiography to show the uh, competent DNA, to see the, uh, that DNA which is having a gene of interest. So that is your autoradiography. So using this, you can find out the a certain blot technique is done. So option C is the right answer. The steps is there given. Identify the most commonly used diagnostic technique in the virus laboratory. So during COVID time, now COVID time is all we went to do RT-PCR test so that it comes to know. So if you have any viral diseases, RT-PCR you can do it. So that is the answer, RT-PCR. XRD, X-ray diffraction is an analytical technique for examining crystalline solid. So for example, you give me a solid. I want to know how amorphous it is or how crystalline it is. I will use this uh, instrument called as XRD, X-ray diffraction. So X-rays are uh, bombarded. It will give me the how crystalline a solid is or how amorphous a solid is. So that uh, X XRD is an analytical technique used for uh, to determine the crystallinity of the solid. This was a child's question, child's play. So it was like uh, they are given one passage. You have to read the passage based on the comprehension. They were asked you four questions, and all the questions are directly there. So I've underlined the answers for all those things. So there's nothing. It was very simple. So for a uh, for a competitive examination, such type of questions are highly. It is too basic or too low. So you can just read the passage and based on the questions, see the given direct questions. So read the passage over here. I will just pause for a minute so that you can pause the video and you can all read the questions. You can read the questions and then answer the following. So I've underlined the question answer also directly for you people. It's like spoon feeding the kids. So I didn't actually expect such type of question. It's like English re comprehension passage only. There's not even twisted questions they have not asked. So it's very simple. So based on that, you can uh, if you read the entire passage neatly, and then you can read the questions that they have given. It's direct question they have asked. So this is one of the questions based on the P urines and pyrimidines in the DNA. It was, you can, uh, Messelson and Stahl identified it. And it was, uh, whose work did they identify? They have, uh, they have identified or they have experimented on Watson and Crick, double uh, uh, click, uh, replication, DNA replication thing they did. And they used a density gradient, so density gradient centrifugation or density transfer experiments, they have used it. And because of the centrifugal force, it, all the sediments would have appeared in the bottom of the tube. So that was very simple. Okay, proteins. This is regarding denaturation. What are all of the factors that will contribute in a protein denaturation? As you all know, heat. The proteins are highly sensitive to heat and temperature. A slow change, a little temp a change, a slight change in the temperature and the pH will denature the protein. So it is the heat, pH, and organic solvents, some acids, alcohols, and all also can change the denature of the protein. So that was, it is the charge that will not affect. They were asking which is not responsible. So it is the charge which is not responsible for protein denaturation. So again, this also, I am not very clear about this question. So oh, if anybody knows the answer, you can comment it in the section come below there. Okay. Which of the following is true with respect to the solubility of fatty acids in water? See, fatty acids are generally insoluble in water. But if, uh, if they are having shorter chain length, then you can it is soluble. As the chain length increases, the solubility decreases. And also, if they are uh, if they are decreases with number of double bonds, so unsaturated uh, fatty acids are highly soluble. Unsaturated fatty acids like uh, uh, double bond and triple bond are highly insoluble. So option D is the right answer. Which of the following statements are false? Elicitors are the compounds used to enhance the growth of plants. No, elicitors will not enhance the growth of the plant. So that is wrong. And so this is option is wrong. Pectin is endogenous type of elicitor. Yes, elicitors are different type endogenous that are produced within the substance inside the plant. Pectin is an endogenous type. And elicitors are compounds and products of degradation of carbohydrate. No, they are not the products of carbohydrate. And elicitors are the compounds used to enhance the secondary metabolite. Yes, very true. So again, this I have indirectly given you in one of my tissue culture videos regarding cell suspension culture and all. There also I have spoken about what is elicitation and all. So the elicitation there, we said we use the elicitors to enhance the secondary metabolite. 
So I have also made so many videos directly or indirectly with this question. Uh, I, uh, there's one video where I have done um, filter sterilization. There also I said, why do we do filter sterilization? What type of elicitors we do? All those things, they are also have discussed it. So elicitors with compounds that will enhance the secondary metabolites. They're asking which of the statement is false. So it is option A and C is false. That is the D is the right answer. So it was very simple. Which of the following groups contain smallest and largest amino acid? It is the glycine is the smallest amino acid. Tryptophan is the largest amino acid, direct question. Which of the following is a connecting link between N-acetylglucosamine and N-acetylmuramic acid in peptidoglycan? The bacterial cell wall, prokaryotic cell wall is made up on peptidoglycan. It is connected by beta 1,4 linkage. These two uh, monomers are connected by the beta 1,4 linkage, another direct question. And the change in the conformation of protein is called as allosteric transition. It's called as allosteric transition. Allos means other. Synapsis, it is a 10th standard level question. Synapsis is defined as pairing of homologous chromosomes. In mitosis, meiosis, meiosis, you, you would have studied. It is defined as pairing of homologous chromosomes. And again, this is also a very direct question. Plant cytokinesis, cytokinesis is division of cytoplasm or division of cell. So it differs in the cell plate. Cell plate is formed in the uh, plants and in animals, cell plate is not formed. Cleavage is formed in case of animal cell. That is the difference between this. So cell plate is the answer. And rancidity, rancidity means uh, butter and oily things, all those things changes uh, its uh, flavor and its uh, aroma and all it changes over time. So that is because of oxidation of fatty acids, I'm very sure. So one of the main option is oxidation of fatty acids with process that is called as rancidity. I'm not sure if there are any other uh, option that can be correct. The key answer is not yet left for me to give a proper uh, answer, but oxidation of fatty acids for sure is uh, one option. There might be or there may not be other option also. So once the key answers come, you can check it with that. This also, uh, okay. Which of the following do not belong to complex B vitamins? So thiamine, definitely thiamine, niacin, folic acid, all three belongs to this vitamin B complex. Ascorbic acid belongs to vitamin C that are present in your citrus fruits. Lemon, amla, uh, capsicum, chilies, uh, lime and all these things, go and all. So ascorbic acid is vitamin C. So that does not belong to this. That is the option C. Um, that is option A is the right answer. So this is an another thing, very simple thing I knew was only quercetin I had uh, known. So quercetin means flavonoids. So again, this also in my flavonoid estimation, I made a video on flavonoid estimation. I used quercetin as a standard. I have mentioned that also. So if you watch that video, you will know that for flavonoid estimation, we use quercetin as a standard. That means quercetin is a flavonoid. So I knew that only one I knew, the rest became very easy. So in sometimes many options might be having one single option. Luckily here, the only one option was having flavonoids as B. So the A is the right answer. A genomic DNA possesses functioning units, a group of genes under the influence of promoters. They are known as operons. So what happens? You have something called as operons and a coding region, non-coding regions, introns and operons, you have codons and all you have. So operons is the right answer. Functioning units uh, under the influence of promoters known as operons. So in uh, you can see this in prokaryotic lac operon concept, concept tryptophan operon concept. So that also again I have made a video. If you had watched my video on lac operon and tryptophan operon, then this would have been very simple. Operon means it's a functional unit of DNA which will uh, it is under the influence of promoters. That is called as an operon. Direct question. In bacteria and eukaryotes, the most common form of regulation of gene activity is transcriptional control. Only when the DNA is becoming to RNA, mRNA. There is splicing occurring, capping will occur, polyadenyl tail will occur. So the only introns will all be spliced up and only exons will be retained. So all this regulation of the gene is happening only in transcriptional. So it is a transcription that controls the regulation of gene activity. So that is the answer for this. And this is also another, uh, even nine standard kids will answer. Even nine standard kids have the same question type. So it was very simple question. So you can see over here, if you know one thing, mitochondria is called as the powerhouse of the cell. If you had just known one of this thing, you would have answered this question very easily. Ribosomes are used for protein synthesis. Contractile vacuole is used for locomotion, I mean, osmoregulation and excretion. Endoplasmic reticulum is involved in lipid synthesis. It's very simple question it is. So any one, if you had known from out of this four, this question you would have answered very easily. So this paper was almost 50% or 60% was easy. Rest 20 or 30% was based on some new concepts and all. That's all you can say. So we'll say it later. This is based on the chi-square test. There only the given C. The degree of freedom is represented by N minus 1. N refers to the probable number of 
classes if they have not given this then it would have been a difficult question since the given n minus 1 represents degree of freedom in f2 generation if you do this f2 generation you will get four different thing for example if you take tall and dwarf uh, i mean uh, you take two characters tall dwarf and red and white or anything you take you'll get four different characters you will get see this is one this is two this is three this is four you will get four different characters 4 minus 1 3 so the degree of freedom is 3 option a it is also a very simple question if they haven't given this then it would have been been difficult so that is about dna replicates very simple question so in the cell cycle in the s phase or the synthetic phase dna replicates in the synthetic phase in g1 phase and g2 phase gap 1 phase and gap 2 phase it uh, necessary proteins and all those things would have been accumulated synthesis of proteins would have happened in s phase the synthetic phase it is the dna replication process will happen in the m phase or the mitotic phase mitosis will happen it's very simple over that a meiosis crossing over is initiated at packetin we have different stages leptotin diplotin zygotin packetin diakinesis and all in the packetin the crossing over happens and the region where it crosses over is called as chiasma chiasmata so very simple it is crossing over occurs in the packetin stage dash are the proteins used to pack dna during organization histones are the proteins which has used in dna packaging again this i have also made a video on dna packaging basic concepts of molecular biology in my channel so if you had watched that this would have been very simple histones are used to package the dna so with this this is the part one so i'll split this video into two parts so that to reduce the time or else the time duration will become very big so in the first part i have discussed 55 questions in the second part there are another 65 more questions 65 to 70 questions in the second part of the video i will discuss the uh, just 70 questions so please do watch the second part also and if you like this video if you learned something new do subscribe to my channel and also do like and give a thumbs up and comment your please post your feedback and suggestions in the comment boxes and also do share this link of my channel and the videos to your friends and your classmates thank you